let's go ahead and get started piping the spiders. So for I've already piped a couple spiders, so for the next one, start with the front two legs nice and close together. Make sure you have a good full squirt of piping on there, otherwise the legs will be too skinny. Do the next U for the next legs. Do the back U for the third pair of legs. Then the very back legs are, are skinnier again. There you have all the legs. Now we put the body on, making sure you're in contact with all the legs for structure. Mound the body up a bit to make it 3D. And then do another little blob for the head. There you have a spider. Now you can make another one. If you'd rather have angled spider legs, which I've often done, then you can start the first two. Don't really get to angle too much. They're kind of straight. Then you can do the jagged with corners for the joints of the leg there next. Do the same thing for the back. Instead of a U, it's more of a angled shape. And then the very back legs. Same thing. Always make the body big enough with a big enough blob to hold it all together. And then the smaller blob for the head. Now keep going as long as you can, as many spiders as you can make. If you make enough spiders to actually use up your whole piping bag, I'm impressed because I've never gotten that far myself. <laughs> I'm sick of spiders before that ever happens. One thing you will notice, and you can see here already, the first spiders I piped have nice skinny legs. This last one I piped, the legs are already fatter. That, that is because the icing is getting warm in my hand in the bag. So, so go ahead and pipe about five or six spiders, maybe if you get fast at it, a whole row, like a dozen. Then take a break, let the icing rest and come back to room temperature instead of being so warm. Your hand will also thank you. Yeah. If you'd like to try the 3D spiders, take the paper tube that has the wax paper over it, do the same design for spider, Go ahead and pipe the legs the same way as you would if it was flat. Maybe a little more difficult because you actually have the curvature you're worrying about now. So make sure your icing is in contact with the wax paper the whole time. Go ahead and do the same pattern of legs. Same thing. Make sure the body has full contact with all the legs. Mount it up. Be a big fat spider body and then the head. And you can since you're putting the spider on a curb, you can just have the legs go every which way. So, you could go like this, have the legs more equal distant because you actually have the curvature working in your favor. Always make sure the body touches all the legs and gives a good blob, then the head. So there you have a lot of spider variety. Pipe spiders until your heart's content, and there you go. Just finishing up the last spider for today, and boy, does my hand hurt. Whew, that's a lot more than you probably want to do all at once. Save your hand. Go ahead and do these while watching TV. Go ahead and keep a toothpick in your royal icing tip, because the royal icing will harden on the tip. Just go ahead and pick that off, prime your icing, make sure it's all going, and you're good to go for another day. I think I'm done with this batch of spiders for today at least, so I'm going to let them dry overnight, at least 24 hours, and then I'll show you how to pry them off and what you can do with them next. My spiders have been sitting for 24 hours now, so they are definitely nice and dry. All the moisture has gone, so they're crispy as they're going to be. Now is the time when we peel them carefully off the wax paper and figure out how we're going to use them for decoration. So let's start with a couple of these curved ones. See how they came out? A little bit curved, not a whole lot. I think it's easiest to peel off the wax paper while carefully holding the spider and look, you still get a leg to break off. As I said, they're very fragile. <laughs> Even though you're being as careful as possible, they still might break off. So don't worry about it. Not all spiders in nature have all their legs either, now do they? So I'm going to put these curved ones hanging off of the edge of the plate. What I like to do a lot is place them here and there around the table like they're really spiders crawling all over. 
It's pretty good, especially in a plate of cookies. Spiders infested. What you don't want to do is put them anywhere there where there's moisture in the food because as soon as the royal icing comes back in contact with moisture, it will dissolve and disintegrate. And these have black food coloring in them, which will stain. It will stain carpet, it will stain your tongue, it will stain clothing, just about anything. It will also make the mouths of jack-o'-lanterns with their fresh turn black as well. So that can be an effect if you were going for it, but if you weren't expecting it, might not be what you wanted to see. I'm going to keep arranging these and then we'll show you what else you can do. See what I mean? Even after all my years of carefully peeling spiders, I still have carnage of broken legs. So don't worry about it. As you can see, when they're all crawling out of a plate or tucked around your other food, they are definitely going to look like a bunch of spiders, whether they all have their legs or not. Here I've peeled all the spiders off. As I just showed you, there are lots of legs left over. But as you can see, when they're all crawling over each other, you're not going to miss one leg or two. They still look very spooky. Also, if you have one leg missing, go ahead and tuck them underneath the cookie, under the edge of the plate, anything else you can think of. That I like them sprinkled around my table rather than all clustered on a plate, but I don't have the whole table ready to show you today. You can see the curved ones actually stay curved off the surface and the flat ones are easy to lay down and, car and crawl around their other food. One thing to mention is if you notice when I was peeling them, I never peeled holding on to one of the legs. I always held the body pretty much from the head to the base of the tail, held it that way and then very carefully peeled the paper back so that I wasn't actually putting extra stress on the leg, as little stress as possible. So here are the awful arachnids. I wanted to show you that you can keep these for a long time as long as they're kept away from moisture. I've had these in this jar I think for two years now. Now they're not really very good shape because a lot of the legs have broken off, but you can see there's not too many that uh, have completely disintegrated into unrecognizable spider shape. These would be good for a potion or two clustered in a jar in your potion. It will make your tongue turn black, that's for sure. <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed watching today. For more projects and recipes like this, you can buy my book, Eerie Elegance, which is available at eerieelegance.com. I hope you have a fabulous Halloween and happy haunting! Voila! The awful arachnids! Yes, they are truly edible! Ha 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 ha.